Hey guys, I'm going to be reading chapter five and six of The Tale of Despero. Chapter five, what Furlough saw. The Princess P looked down at Despero. She smiled at him. And while her father played another song, a song about the deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls, the princess reached out and touched the top of the mouse's head. Despero stared up at her in wonder. The pea, he decided, looked just like the picture of the fair maiden in the book in the library. The princess smiled at Despero again, and this time, Despero smiled back. And then, something incredible happened. The mouse fell in love. Reader, you may ask this question. In fact, you must ask this question. Is it ridiculous for a very small, sickly, big-eared mouse to fall in love with a beautiful human named Princess P? The answer is yes, of course it's ridiculous. Love is ridiculous, but love is also wonderful and powerful. And Despero's love for the Princess P would prove in time to be all of these things, powerful, wonderful, and ridiculous. You're so sweet, said the princess to Despero. You're so tiny. As Despero looked up at her adoringly, Furlough happened to scurry past the princess's room, moving his head left to right, right to left, back and forth. Cripes, said Furlough. He stopped. He stared into the princess's room. His whiskers became as tight as bowstrings. What Furlough saw was Despero Tilling sitting at the foot of the king. What Furlough saw was the princess touching the top of his brother's head. Cripes, shouted Furlough again. Oh, cripes, he's nuts. He's a goner. And executing a classic scurry, Furlough went off to tell his father, Lester Tilling, the terrible, unbelievable news of what he had just seen. Why is Despero's brother so worried about his, him being seen by humans? How do humans usually react when they see mice? Chapter six, this drum. He cannot, he simply cannot be my son, Lester said. He clutched his whiskers with his front paws and shook his head from side to side in despair. Of course he is your son, said Antoinette. What do you mean he is not your son? This is ridiculous statement. Why you must always make that ridiculous statements? You, said Lester, this is your fault. The French blood in him has made him crazy. C'est moi, said Antoinette. C'est moi? Why must it always be I who takes the blame? If your son is such a disappointment, it is as much your fault as mine. Something must be done, said Lester. He pulled on a whisker so hard that it came loose. He waved the whisker over his head and he pointed it at his wife. He will be the end of us all, he shouted, sitting at the foot of a human king. Unbelievable, unthinkable. Oh, so dramatic said Antoinette. She held out one paw and studied her painted nails. He is a small mouse. How much of the harm can he do? If there is one thing I have learned in this world, said Lester, it is that mice must act like mice or else there is bound to be trouble. I will call a special meeting of the mouse council. Together, we will decide what must be done. Oh, said Antoinette, you and this council of the mouse. It is a waste of time, in my opinion. Don't you understand, shouted Lester. He must be punished. He must be brought up before the tribunal. He pushed past her and dug furiously through a pile of paper scraps until he uncovered a thimble with a piece of leather stretched across its open end. Oh, please, said Antoinette, 
She covered her ears. Not this drum of the Council of the Mouse. Yes, said Lester, the drum. He held it up high above his head, first to the north and then to the south, and then to the east and the west. He lowered it and turned his back to his wife and closed his eyes and took a deep breath and began to beat the drum slowly. One long beat with his tail, two staccato beats with his paws. Boom, tat tat. Boom, tat tat. Boom, tat tat. The rhythm of the drum was a signal for the members of the mouse council. Boom, tat tat. Boom, tat tat. Boom. The beating of the drum let them know that an important decision would have to be made. One that affected the safety and well being of the entire mouse community. Boom, tat tat. Boom, tat tat. Boom. That's the end of chapter six. We'll have to wait and see what happens to the mouse council when they get together. They're obviously making a decision. Um, because Despero, you know, he's not following the mouse rules. And his parents are very worried about it. His brothers and sisters are worried about it. Who knows what will happen next. I will post two more chapters tomorrow.